Hey guys, it's Rainy Nights. I just finished watching the 2007 Michael Bay directed Hasbro toy endorsed eBay sponsored. Um, I don't even know what to call it. Just epic, right? Epic. So the original Transformers. Now, I, yeah, I didn't see, I think that's a pretty newer version of him. I have not seen the, the, the sequels to this. Absolutely not. So I have zero knowledge of what's to come in the future, but I did see Bumblebee four times and this is my second, maybe third time watching this original. So I am going to finish the rest of them, but I just want to let you know that those two were the only ones I had knowledge on. So this one's really, really funny, honestly. And I, this is one of those films that is so bad it's good and all of its like flaws are like inherent positives and necessities and I wouldn't want it any other way so definitely a guilty pleasure film um, basically what's happening well I kind of went over Transformers lore a tiny bit in the Bumblebee review already because that one was a prequel to this film so I'm just gonna skip all that and just tell you what is happening in this one directly so um, the so we're following Sam played by Shia LaBeouf the uh, I'm probably butchering his name the just do it guy, but I actually know him more recognizably as the guy who goes up to stoplights and just like stares you down. You know, you should go watch that clip if you haven't seen it. It's so hard for me to take him seriously after I saw that. Um, like the, the just do it thing's fine, that, <laughs> but just you gotta go see that clip. Basically, he just he just rolls up to a stoplight and then just stares at the person next to him for like 15 seconds straight, and then just goes on his merry day. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, ta I'm finding it hard to take this movie seriously already. So, Transformers. We're following Sam, who is this uh, wannabe ladies man slash um, poser, right? And he really, really desperately wants to be cool, but he's just not. Um, and his father, no, his grandfather is an important historical figure for being an explore, explorer. So since Sam's kind of low-key a scumbag in this film, he tries to sell off all of his uh, all of his grandfather's historically important memorabilia on eBay for dirt cheap um, because he wants to buy his first car. And he does go buy his first car and he comes home with this rundown um, yellow uh, with racing stripes. I'm not really a car guy, so I can't tell you what exactly it is. I know, I know it becomes a Camaro, but I'm pretty sure it didn't begin as a Camaro. So he takes this crappy car home. He's really happy with it, um, and he's trying to impress his crush. Which, by the way, this is the OG Hollywood love interest character. This is the, this is where it all started, as far as I'm concerned. When it came to these generic sort of Hollywood ones. But honestly, she's not even that terrible in this film. So. He's obsessed with Megan Fox and wants to, like, you know, court her and all that. Um, and his car turns out to be Bumblebee, who is a lieutenant of the Autobot Resistance. Um, and he is on Earth because the Autobots are fleeing for their lives. So the Autobots are trying to defend both their own Resistance species as well as the human lives as well. So they go down to Earth with Optimus Prime and they're trying to stop Megatron and his Decepticons from getting the AllSpark, which is basically the ultimate script writer's tool. It is like the infinity gauntlet on crack. It does absolutely everything you'd ever need it to in any situation with no repercussions. So going forward, they can abuse that power and just screenwrite their way out of any logic or any is possible issues they might have. Um, and for some reason in this film, the AllSpark, which is like this cube thing, uh, instantly turns human technology into Decepticons, which I think is really weird. Uh, but maybe that will get, maybe some like lore nut would be able to explain that because I don't get why, like it, it like for example, the, so yeah, uh, Megatron wants to get this AllSpark so that he can use it to convert all of human, humanity's technology into Decepticons to rule the universe. But the part that confuses me is why are they all automatically evil, you know? Like, is he personally programming? Like, it's just a little, it's like a mother box. It's like a mother box from Justice League. So why is it inherently evil, you know? And also, the, like, Optimus Prime wants to use the AllSpark to, for good. So what dictates whether the microwave that it touches becomes evil or good? Literally, steering wheels become Decepticons in this. Literally, Mountain Dew, a Mountain Dew soda machine becomes a Decepticon in this. 
and an Xbox 360 becomes a Decepticon in this because it comes into contact with that. So I, I it's it's a really funny movie. So well, usually I break my reviews into positives and negatives. However, that doesn't feel right because the movie's inherently mixed, it's inherently flawed, and as I said, all of its flaws are good things anyway. So I'm just going to simply speak about it. And you can interpret and decide for yourself whether these are good or bad things. Regardless though, it's really funny and it's really entertaining. And uh, it's a guilty pleasure. And uh, I'm ashamed to say I'm honestly kind of into it. Like I'm low-key kind of looking forward to the sequels just because of the nature of this film. So yeah, the lore is really funny, okay? So first of all, you have to get over the hurdle that so these are literally robots that turn into human-designed cars, okay? But for some reason, humanity uh, treats them like they're like this foreign alien species. And what's even funnier is that this alien foreign species that comes down to Earth, the reason they speak English is because they went on the internet. They actually say that. I'm not making that up. That's The movie's unapologetically stupid, which I like, okay? If it was taken a little bit too seriously, it would have sucked. But this was honestly, this was being a self-parody at time. So, the Autobots learned English from the internet, which by the way, now that Bumblebee exists, it's canon that the Decepticons created the internet for the humans in the first place. It was not a human that invented the internet in this universe. So, I just think that's all really funny. The lore and universe is hilarious. Like, how can you be an alien species if you're literally... Like, remember, they're not just turning into cars on on the surface for to blend in with the rest of them, right? Like, yes, that's one reason for them to do it, but they turn into cars and regular things on their planet of Cybertron as well. This is how they've always been designed and loved, so I thought that was really funny. Um, the main, so the characters. There are some pointless side characters. I didn't care for the blonde, um, the blonde analyst. I thought she was pointless, and I didn't care for the uh, generic soldier guy that had like a daughter back home or something like that. Those two were a waste of time. There were some funny minor characters though, like the uh, the conspiracy theorist guy that lives at his grandma's house. He was really funny. Uh, Sheila LaBeouf's, uh, how do you pronounce his name? I should call him Sam. Sam's parents are really, really funny. So they were great. And honestly, Megan Fox, it wasn't as bad as I remembered. I remember this being like so tropey and just hot girl ends up with the good guy, just like the most generic formulaic thing ever. It actually was not as bad as I remembered. It still wasn't good, but I just want to say it wasn't that bad. The reason it wasn't that bad is because they actually did give her more than one character trait. Uh, she has a juvenile um, criminal history. Uh, she is very mechanical and, and um, a grease monkey is the term she uses. And um, yeah, I don't know. And she's, you know, she's intelligent. Like, she's self-aware. She's not just, like, getting puppy-eyed, doughy-eyed at the protagonist. She's like, you know, she knows what's up. You know, she knows when he's making a move on her, etc. So, she actually wasn't that bad. The, actual, the only bad things that were bad about her was, honestly, the fact that she had barely any speaking lines. Um, I think Sam had about 20 times the speaking lines that she had. So, for the second half of the film, she was just kind of there. She was just kind of like background eye candy for the audience, so yeah, but not Megan Fox's fault. Um, I, I just want to say she was okay, actually. She was better than I thought uh, for being the OG Hollywood kind of love interest character that all the future movies in Hollywood will, will model after. So yeah, other things about this, it's, uh, it's epic, right? It is, the CGI actually holds up today. I would say personally that this is a, this is a 2007 movie that has the CGI of like, a 2020 movie. Like, it really looks good. They do not spare a penny here. The only single bad CGI moment in the entire film's two-hour, 20-something runtime was when the when the steering wheel came alive. But that was, like, for... That was supposed to be a joke anyway. So, it looks good. It looks really good. And even though everything about it is sheer stupidity, I'm still kind of into it. Like, I still kind of want to know where this is going, which is a good thing. So, yeah. It's a super mixed movie. Uh, I'm going to give the original Transformers a 6 out of 10. It is a purposefully uh, over-the-top epic uh, with some surprisingly funny moments. Um, and even though the main character is such a pain in the ass, he was honestly the perfect main character for a film like this. So, yeah, I, I'm not going to, like, I'm not too bitter about this one. Yeah, it's a 6 out of 10. It's not that great a score, 
but I'm not too bitter about it. It is pretty entertaining. Uh, it's certainly nostalgic. Got a great soundtrack. Visuals do hold up today. So despite the fact that the universe lore and story are complete trash, I mean, this is the worst of the worst. Um, this is as bad as it gets as far as sci-fi lore goes, but I mean, they're just trying to sell Hasbro toys at the end of the day and promote eBay as a website. That's kind of the objective of the film. But uh, I just appreciate that it's so, it is so over the top. Like, it's um, almost overstimulating, you know? It's like they're just trying to, they're trying to kill you with sheer exhaustion. But like, since I'm sort of having a fun time, I'm kind of down with it. Like, yes, please continue to exhaust me, movie. Give me all you've got. They don't hold back, they don't save money, uh, and it's just CGI madness. So, 6 out of 10 for the original Transformers. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.